Hi, I'm Andrew. Today I'd like to teach you how to find all of the intercepts and the asymptotes of the function x squared plus 2x minus 3, which is all being divided by x squared minus 1. And then we're going to sketch a little bit of a graph. All right. So first things first, let's find the intercepts. So before you kind of start this process at all, what I really want to do is I want to fully factor this uh, function and make sure I cancel any factors that might be in common. Okay, that's always kind of your first thought. So regardless of if you're doing intercepts or asymptotes. So in terms of the function, I'm just going to rewrite it. So it's x squared plus 2x minus 3, all being divided then by x squared uh, minus 1. So what I do is I factor this. I have to factor the numerator. So I need to, two values that multiply to negative 3, but that then could add to positive 2. And we know that that's going to be a positive 3 and then a minus 1, right? Negative 1. On the bottom, we realize we have a perfect square. And that's simply going to be x plus 1 and x minus 1. Now, in this problem, notice how we do have a common factor. And this, in prior problems, if I didn't factor it, it's because I'm recognizing already that there won't be a common factor. Okay, but you want to think about this all the time. And what you want to do then is cancel those common factors. So what's going to happen now is your function is left with x plus 3, which is all being divided then by x plus 1 you are now going to analyze the problem as if this was the function, okay? For most things, all right? Yeah, we could probably do it for all of them, but anyway. So what we're gonna do now is let's pretend that this is our function, all right? So let's just get rid of all this stuff over here. And what I'm now gonna do is I'm now gonna find the x and the y intercepts, okay? Using this, so the x intercepts. So what you do when you want to find the x-intercept is you want to set y equal to 0 and solve it for x. Okay, so here's our function. So let's just get rid of the box. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the y value, set it equal to 0, and I'm going to solve it for x. So you cross multiply here, and you realize that that just totally cancels that basically, right? It's just 0, and that's going to be equal to x plus 3. So you solve that, you bring the 3 on over, so x is going to be equal to negative 3. So this is the x-coordinate of the y of the x-intercept. So basically what you realize is that when y is 0, x is going to be negative 3. In other words, the coordinate is going to be negative 3, comma 0. Always the x-coordinate first. Now, when you want to find now the y-intercept, all you're going to do is you're going to then perform the opposite uh, operation. Instead of setting y equal to 0, you're going to now write x or plug in x being equal to 0. And then just solve it. Now you technically don't need this factored in this case because it would have worked out the same way. But, you know, it's kind of nice. Anyway, uh, it's going to be 3 over 1, and uh, that's just 3, right? So remember, the y-intercept now always has an x-coordinate of 0, and the y is going to be 3. So here we have 1 x-intercept, 1 y-intercept. Okay, now for the asymptotes. Again, we have to, we'll start with the vertical. We have to use that uh, function that we had that's fully factored, okay? All you're going to do now, after it's fully factored and anything's canceled, to find the vertical asymptote, you take the denominator, this denominator, not this one, and set that equal to zero. And all you're going to do is solve it for x. And this winds up giving you the actual equation of the vertical asymptote. It's really not bad right? Nice and easy. So that is the vertical asymptote. All right, let's move this on down. Next, then, what you would do is you would try to identify the horizontal asymptote slash the slant asymptote. All right, they're two different things, but you're going to analyze it, uh, and you're going to determine which one it's going to be, because you have to first determine whether it's a top-heavy function, an equally heavy function, or a bottom-heavy. Now, it turns out you can go back to this if you want. You could probably also use this too, but you can go back to the original, all right? And this would be considered an equally weighted uh, function because the highest power of x in the numerator is a 2 and the highest power of x in the denominator is also a 2. If this were a 3, that would be top heavy. And if this were a 3, let's just say that would be bottom heavy, okay? Turns out that when you have a top heavy function, you're going to be doing a slant asymptote and we'd have to do then long division to find it. But whenever you have now this equally or bottom heavy, they're always horizontal asymptotes. The bottom heavy one is really easy because it's always going to be y is equal to zero. But when you have the equally heavy one, what you're going to do is you're going to take the highest power, the coefficient of the highest power of x, which is a one in the numerator, divided by the coefficient of the highest power of x in the denominator, which is a one, and you just do the work, right? So it's one over one is just simply going to be one. 
So what that tells us is that the equation here is going to be one. All right, that will be the horizontal asymptote. Now we basically have everything we need in order to graph this thing. All right, so we create a little coordinate system and I'm gonna to start to plot my x-intercept, so negative three comma zero. So one, two, three comma zero. So it's right here. Then my y-intercept is zero comma three. Okay, I'm gonna plot my vertical asymptote at negative one. So I draw my line. Okay, right at negative one, I'm gonna dash it. Okay, and then I'm also gonna write in my horizontal asymptote here at positive one, it tells me. Okay, now I have to figure out, now the way this problem worked out is kinda of nice, but basically what you're gonna have is you're gonna have a graph in one of a few places. If you have a graph at this point, then you can have a graph either here or here. And if you had a graph down here, you can have a graph either here, you know, or here. But the nice thing is that I already have points in two of the quadrants and I'm looking at this thing. It's basically the, the asymptotes are breaking it up into new quadrants for me. So I realized that I, I have a graph in this quadrant and in this quadrant. So I know that the graph is eventually, right, it's going to go out, never touch or intersect these asymptotes. Right, I'm gonna to try to do my best to kind of draw this as best as possible. But it would be something like this. You can't cross those asymptotes. Same thing over here, right? It's gonna go on up, but it's never gonna quite meet these, these locations, okay? It's gonna go on and on and on upwards. It's a little curved, it shouldn't curve. It's always gonna just come and uh, approach it. That's the graph, right? That's it. And you can double check this by graphing it. So you can do x squared plus two x minus three, and then divide it by now x squared plus one. No, minus one. I keep doing that. Why? Don't not sure. So you hit graph. Look at how beautiful that is. As my ninth and twelfth grade math teacher used to say, it's a beautiful thing. So guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. We have a whole channel dedicated to helping you through your classes. If you're taking math, chemistry, or physics, we have a lot more coming too, but check us out. I think you're gonna be very happy because we do actual problems. We teach the theory, but we teach you how to apply the theory to the problems, because what are you gonna see on your test? Problems and questions, right? You ha If you wanna become good at this, you have to do a ton of practice, a lot of practice, okay? And I promise you, if you do more practice, you'll see how easy this really is, okay? We'd love to help you. Check us out.